The following program contains graphic images. Viewer discretion is advised. I am an EMT. If you are injured, come to me. It felt like a showdown was coming to town. People are getting injured, and our job is to protect this business, and part of my job is also help people. At first, I was like, it kind of sounded like a firework, and I was like, oh no, that's a gun battle. People are getting shot all around us. People are just getting shot everywhere, guys. Kyle Rittenhouse, according to police, 17-year-old, lives in Antioch, Illinois, which is about 20 miles from Kenosha. Do you want to have a lawyer in this circle, yes or no? I would like a lawyer, but I'm willing to talk. It's not a matter of who done it. It's just the matter of the intent. This defense team has to put Mr. Rittenhouse up on the stand. This is not a legitimate criminal prosecution. It is a political prosecution. Christine, can I just say? There is a post online with a picture of Kyle Rittenhouse and Pudgy's on the fifth. Free Kyle Rittenhouse! Free Kyle Rittenhouse! My son was a hero and my son lost his life protecting other people. What is he looking at? Uh, it could range anywhere from uh, reckless injury to reckless homicide and- uh, Murder? <laughs> you got it. you doing out here? Obviously, you're armed, and uh, you're in front of this so, business we saw burning last night, so what's up? So people are getting injured, and our job is to protect this business. This is 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse, just hours before he would become a household name. And part of my job is to help people. But there's somebody hurt, I'm running into harm's way. While he doesn't know it yet, he is clearly in over his head. That's why I have my rifle, because I need to protect myself, obviously. My it's the third night of protests in Kenosha, Wisconsin, sparked by viral cell phone video of the officer involved shooting of Jacob Blake. Tensions were already running high in America. George Floyd was killed back in May, May 25th of 2020. Ugh. What do you want? I can't breathe. This is three months after the George Floyd death. And we know how the world reacted to that video. Black lives matter! Black lives matter! Now there's a brand new viral video out of a place called Kenosha, Wisconsin. Another police shooting. So the country was already on edge. It was summertime, it was hot. Um, and then the Jacob Blake shooting happens and things really took off and the attention turned to Kenosha, Wisconsin. Chaos erupted in Kenosha overnight. Large fires engulfed dump trucks, and law enforcement appeared to deploy tear gas to disperse large crowds. I was working that Sunday, and I get a call from my assignment editor, and he says, we've had an officer-involved shooting in Kenosha. Along with the protesters, citizen journalists armed with cameras and cell phones also flocked to Kenosha, broadcasting live minute by minute to the world. This is independent journalism. This building is gone. This is gonna be an empty lot. All the cars over there are gonna start spreading just like last night into that building. Oh, shit, that other one just went up too. <laughs> One of those citizen journalists was Kenosha native Corey Elijah. My, wow. So the tear gas had really, really burned really bad. Whew. We're gonna move a little closer, but they moved in another vehicle, so they have the MRAP, and I believe they have a Bearcat out now. As I walk out onto 56th Street, all of the garbage trucks are, are ablaze. We got uh, some vehicles on fire. And that was the, like the moment I had like the real realization that things were more serious than definitely the situation with the George Floyd protests. So the whole world is now watching Kenosha, Wisconsin, and you're getting a, a firsthand look at what's taking place because you've got these citizen journalists walking around with their phones and cameras, and you are there. 
and you're seeing these protests erupt. No matter where you were sitting, you could be sitting somewhere in Europe and feel like you could be a part of these protests. So that was what was really different and I think helped Kenosha become a little bit of a powder keg. <laughs> We're not gonna put up with what we saw Monday night. We're going to be assertive in helping to protect the city of Kenosha in Kenosha County. It was mass chaos in Kenosha. And we know the police were trying their best, but police can't be everywhere. They can't see everything and respond to every single incident. And there was just so much happening, so much violence, so much unrest. And at the same time, Jacob Blake's family was even coming out publicly and pleading for peace. As I was riding through here, through the city, I noticed a lot of damage that doesn't reflect my son or my family. If Jacob knew what was going on as far as that goes, the violence and the destruction, he would be very unpleased. The first night of protests were centered in downtown Kenosha on Sheridan Road. One of many businesses destroyed was a used car lot named Car Source. In the daylight, you could see charred remains of a used car lot. And I do remember one thing about Sunday night. It was very late. It was probably like, well, Monday morning, three in the morning. That whole car lot was just ablaze. It was really the smell of the burning rubber that really got you. And then, I mean, at a certain point, it's a giant car lot full of cars that are full of gas. So it sounded like a, a war zone with a bunch of bombs blowing up. One of the businesses that gets hit is, is Car Source, and they've got three different locations on this main strip in Kenosha. And it's what's happening to this business that ends up becoming the connection to Kyle Rittenhouse. Coming up. Hey, he just shot them. Hey, dude right here just shot them. 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse arms himself with an assault rifle and ends up being at the center of a deadly shooting and a national debate. Kyle Rittenhouse is the hero of Kenosha. And my son lost his life protecting other people. He was a hero. When chaos in Kenosha, the Kyle Rittenhouse case continues. It's Tuesday, August 25th, the third day of unrest in Kenosha, Wisconsin, after the officer-involved shooting of 29-year-old Jacob Blake. Blake was seriously injured, and over the past two nights, dozens of businesses have been burned to the ground as local authorities try to regain control. Along with hundreds of protesters, dozens of citizen journalists are streaming live to the world from Sheridan Road, the epicenter of the first night of protests. Thanks, just got heated. I'm not about to stand. I don't want to fire at all. You get to the third night of this unrest, of these protests, of this riot that is taking place. You've got local police there, obviously. The National Guard comes in. And then you've got some citizens who come in, the Kenosha Guard. It's this loose organization. Somebody had a Facebook page, called it the Kenosha Guard. Uh, there were a lot of topics being discussed on that website. And they didn't like what was going on. And they felt they had a duty under the Second Amendment to carry their guns and protect their property. And I'm here with a bunch of militia. They're protecting a local car shop. They're not being paid to be here, but they are doing it in service to the owner. This is disturbing for a number of reasons, um, because here you have citizens acting like the police officer or a member of the quote unquote Kenosha guard or something. We know that police have lots and lots of training to do the job that they do. It felt like a showdown was coming to town and you know, you know, like an old Western. It was like, by sundown, get ready. Like, have your business boarded up. Looks like they tag his boys up here. Oh. You know, we don't know what's gonna happen tonight. Among the volunteer militia, 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse, armed with an AR-15 and a medical kit. I am an EMT. If you are injured, come to me. 
Kyle Rittenhouse, according to police, 17-year-old, lives in Antioch, Illinois, which is about 20 miles from Kenosha. He used to work as a lifeguard. He was in like a youth police program. Reports of his social media indicate that he uh, was a big supporter of police. There was a picture of him um, holding the alleged weapon on Facebook. Rittenhouse traveled to Kenosha with a friend, Dominic Black, who at 18 was a year older than Kyle and was dating his sister. Dominic Black tells police that he was an employee of Car Source and that he and Kyle Rittenhouse kind of answered the call to go protect the other lots uh, that were still at risk of damage in, in the following nights of protesting. So people are getting injured and our job is to protect this business, and part of my job is to also help people. If there's somebody hurt, I'm running into harm's way. What's really striking is, is you look at Kyle Rittenhouse, and he's, he's got like these chubby cheeks, right? And he's, he's kind of a small guy with a big, big gun. And, and, you, and you wonder, you know, he's, he's not an adult. He's literally a child. He's underage, but he's in the middle of all of this. Seems somewhat out of place. I guess chemical bombs are allegedly being used. I, I didn't get a idea of what kind of chemical bomb. They're mixing ammonia and gasoline leaked together and it's causing an ammonia bomb. And what does that do? It causes irritation to the throat and eyes and the police are also using tear it's gas. It's like tear gas? It's worse than tear gas. Okay, gotcha. Meanwhile, a block away, there is another group of citizen militia members arguing with protesters in a gas station parking lot. What are you here? What are you? That's some salt ass in this group is Joseph Rosenbaum. He's a 36-year-old convicted felon from Arizona who, according to the Washington Post, had just been discharged from a Milwaukee hospital after attempting suicide. Also in the group, behind Rosenbaum, is Anthony Huber, holding a skateboard in his left hand. He has been protesting for two nights and, according to people who knew him, was a friend of Jacob Blake. Also in the same parking lot is 35-year-old Joshua Zeminski, wearing a black hoodie and stocking cap. And in this video, it's clear he's holding a firearm in his right hand. At this point in the video, we can see Joseph Rosenbaum starting to become noticeably agitated. Can you hey, shoot, me. Me. shoot me! Shoot me! Okay. I'm like, that's what I'm like. Let's go, me! For real! Kyle Rittenhouse spent most of his night at the Car Source parking lot at the corner of 59th and Sheridan. But at some point, he and another volunteer decided to leave and go to a different location about four blocks away. As Kyle and his partner move down Sheridan, Kyle asks people if they need medical attention. Eventually, Rittenhouse gets separated and tries to make his way back to where he started. At one point, our cameras caught Kyle Rittenhouse walking by, going up to the officers, uh, kind of trying to communicate with them, saying, hey, I work at that business. I'm just here to protect the business, is what he said. Um, and the officers just kind of shoot him away. This road is closed. Do not cross on the Sheridan. Do not come down here. Do not come down here. Do not come down here. I you do not come down here. It's been made very clear to you. Do not come down here. You with the law gun, do not come down here. This is closed. I do remember seeing them, you know, because it wasn't a lot of, it wasn't too many of the militia, you know, members, I guess, uh, with those big guns. I mean, they st stuck out. And Kyle Rittenhouse stuck out. He didn't really seem like he was with anyone, right? Like he was with people or something, but he didn't, he seemed kind of disconnected from everyone. Kyle Rittenhouse ends up at the same gas station where Joseph Rosenbaum, Anthony Huber, and Joshua Zeminski were earlier. And within hours, all three men and Kyle Rittenhouse would come face to face with deadly results. Coming up, gunfire on Sheridan Road. It kind of sounded like a firework. I was like, oh no, that's a gun battle. So I ran. 
when chaos in Kenosha, the Kyle Rittenhouse case continues. The following program contains graphic images. Viewer discretion is advised. It's now after 11 p.m. on Tuesday, August 25th, 2020. 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse has traveled from his home in Illinois to Kenosha, Wisconsin, joining dozens of other armed private citizens who, after two days of unrest, claim they're protecting local businesses. And according to the video, it seemed that law enforcement appreciated the volunteer militia. You could even see the officers giving them water, um, almost uh, de facto deputizing them, telling them thank you for being out here. Take a look at the video. We need water. We need water. We'll throw you one. Thank you. All right, come on, guys. Let's get out of here. Damn. You see police handing out water to, to Rittenhouse and, and company for, for helping, I guess, helping police in the streets of Kenosha. This is not normal. It is odd um, and, and so unusual, too. The rioting shouldn't be happening, but it was. Uh, however, uh, these citizens did not belong acting like members of the military or acting like police. At some point, Kyle Rittenhouse decides to leave the used car lot he's been protecting on Sheridan Road to walk to another lot owned by the same business four blocks away. Corey Elijah is a citizen journalist who has been live streaming the protests. Definitely people throwing rocks. Be careful. Elijah, who's on Sheridan Road, sees Kyle Rittenhouse run past him, carrying a fire extinguisher. Kyle runs past me. Where he's going, I'm not sure. I believe he had a fire extinguisher in his hand or something in his hand, but no one was chasing him at all. So I'm like, all right, well, maybe there's something going on down there. So I just get on my skateboard and, you know, I start streaming and heading, heading down in that direction. So Kyle Rittenhouse eventually gets to the car source parking lot. And when he gets there, who else is there? Joseph Rosenbaum and Joshua Zeminski. And you've got Kyle Rittenhouse in, in the middle of it. As I'm skating up, I see people start jumping on cars and, you know, start beating on cars. And then as I, I turn to head in that direction, that's when the gunfire lets out from somewhere behind me. Mm. Shots fired, guys. There are two videos of the Joseph Rosenbaum shooting. In the first, it's very difficult to see. This is Kyle Rittenhouse. Joseph Rosenbaum is here. They both move out of frame behind a car before gunshots erupt. Ooh. This is the second video from a different angle. From this angle, you can see Kyle Rittenhouse before shots are fired. And here, you can see Joseph Rosenbaum. But look closely to the far left, just beyond the lot. Look for a flash. Somebody discharges a weapon seconds before Kyle Rittenhouse then starts shooting. After the shooting, Rittenhouse walks around the black sedan, then seems to look down at Rosenbaum as he takes out his cell phone. What's ironic about that is he said he was there to provide medical aid, but he doesn't provide medical aid to the person that he shot, Joseph Rosenbaum, at that time. Again, he makes a phone call and then leaves the area. While the video of the shooting itself wasn't super clear, the aftermath of the shooting is almost too clear. I mean, you, you, you see what happened to Rosenbaum. You see people trying to help people. They don't know what to do. Where, dude? Where? Where's the hole? Wait, where are you? Where? 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 Where?
after shooting Rosenbaum, people chased Kyle Rittenhouse down Sheridan Road. That's when Brendan Gutenschwager started recording. People were immediately um, yelling at him, saying, get him, grab him. Um, he just shot somebody. Two people chasing down Kyle Rittenhouse, Anthony Huber, who was armed with his skateboard, and Gage Grosskreutz, who was carrying a gun. And he's taking off down the street as several people are following, chasing after him, trying to tackle him down. They were chasing after him. And at a certain point, he tripped and fell, the man with the gun. And so then as people started to close in on him and surround him, he started firing off at them. In that video, there's a confrontation between Kyle Rittenhouse and Anthony Huber. Anthony Huber, he's got his skateboard. A lot of people look at that video, and I know this is the way the defense sees it. He's using that skateboard as a weapon against Kyle Rittenhouse, trying to get him and perhaps trying to get his gun. And as a result of that confrontation, Anthony Huber is shot. And he is shot dead at that point. Then immediately after, you see Gage Grosskreutz. He comes towards a Kyle Rittenhouse. He's armed with a gun and he gets shot, but he survived. And again, speaking to the power of that weapon, it almost blows off Gage Grosskreutz's entire arm. The shooter just got up and proceeded to walk towards the line of police um, that were there in the Bearcat and a couple vehicles. And he basically just walked right up to them with the gun still out in front of him. Someone in here straight ahead. A lot of people are really upset by what they see at the end of the video, where you see Kyle Rittenhouse walking down that street, trying to surrender to police. There was definitely a disconnect there. And I think the police got an awful lot of unfair criticism, in my view, because police can't be everywhere. They can't know about everything. For them to be able to sort everything out and know who's what, doing what, where, uh, it, it was nearly impossible. He has his hands up. He has an AR-15 strapped over his shoulder. Clearly what looks like a posture of surrender, at least to my eyes. And the police basically wave him off. Coming up. Reckless injury, reckless homicide. Murder? Kyle Rittenhouse turns himself in to the police. When chaos in Kenosha, the Kyle Rittenhouse case continues. The following program contains graphic images. Viewer discretion is advised. shot all around us. People are just getting shot everywhere, guys. It's just after 11.45 p.m. August 25th, 2020 on Sheridan Road in Kenosha, Wisconsin. 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse has shot and killed Joseph Rosenbaum and Anthony Huber. Huber was shot while Rittenhouse was on the ground after being chased down the street. Immediately after Huber is shot, Rittenhouse fires again and hits 26-year-old Gage Grosskreutz, who was acting as a medic that night when he was shot in the arm by Rittenhouse. This video was captured by a citizen journalist seconds after Grosskreutz was shot. The video is horrific. I mean, you, you see the damage that an AR-15 can do. It's tough to watch, but it's the reality of what happened that night. Stay right there. Hey, this is firearm. This is Um, you see him then eventually getting help. A number of people come to his aid. Uh, the police arrive. They set up a perimeter around him to try to help him medically. I got him up there. There, there, there. I think about the screams, about the gunshots. Um, I think about everything all the time. I saw Anthony Huber get murdered right in front of me. Immediately after the shootings, Kyle Rittenhouse was able to walk away from the crime scenes, eventually going home to Illinois with his friend, Dominic Black. But within hours, 
Rittenhouse and his mother, Wendy, showed up at the Antioch, Illinois Police Department. Kyle, my name is the MC on your side of the table. Notice when you watch the video, Kyle Rittenhouse walks into the interrogation room carrying a garbage can. Before he walked in, according to the police, he was a mess. He was hysterical, he was crying, he was throwing up, and it's likely why he brought that garbage can into the interrogation room. So you probably heard something like this before. Is it Miranda? Yeah. I have to read it though because again, I'm, I'm in your house. I don't know what they've told you in terms of, you know, I'm just here in the handcuffs. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay. Okay, I gotta read it still. So I'll read it and then if you have any questions, we'll clarify. Okay. The interrogation is fascinating to watch because Kyle Rittenhouse, you can tell, feels some camaraderie with police and, and wants to talk to them, wants to cooperate, wants to tell them what happened. He talks about knowing what Miranda is, but it's kind of unclear that he really understood what one's rights pursuant to Miranda are in our country. Do you wanna have a lawyer in this circle, yes or no? I would like a lawyer, but I'm willing to talk until a lawyer is available. Okay. You I'll break let it. you know later that they, I can. They can't do anything because they can't do anything until the lawyer comes. That's what, how that goes, Kyle. Right. Well, you, you've asked for a lawyer, so I. You can't. You cannot answer. You cannot tell him anything. So I can't talk to you. Yep. Okay. So you say you want to talk, but unfortunately, once you've invoked rights of attorney, I can't yeah. ask you any questions. That's how it goes in the courthouse. So, so unfortunately, now it's just we have to wait for the lawyer. In the beginning of the whole thing, he he exercises his Fifth Amendment right by saying, "I want a lawyer." So at that point, it's over. But Kyle Rittenhouse did actually speak to Antioch police before actually backing into lawyering up. And his comments weren't recorded, but they did end up in a police report. Kyle told them that he had shot two white kids, that he had ended a man's life, and that he also mentioned that he had been beaten with a baseball bat and a skateboard at the time of the incident. While Kyle Rittenhouse waits to find out if he's going to be arrested, Kenosha police talk to his friend, Dominic Black, about what happened in a separate interrogation room. Now, who's 17, right? Yeah. You know where he got the rifle? Yeah, it's mine. He got it from my dad's house. Okay. So it's your rifle? Yeah. It was... He bought it with his money, but I got it for him. And the deal was, it's to stay at my dad's house. And you knew he had it? Yeah, I, I'm not, the whole, I don't know why the whole time I'm thinking, I'm like, he's not 18. I don't know why I'm thinking the whole time. I'm not looking, I mean, yeah, the bigger fish to fry, it's not saying I'm looking at you for a story. Yeah, I know, but like in my head, like I, I could have stopped it. But I know if I would have told him no, he would have threw a fit. Yeah. Then, around 8 a.m., the decision is made to charge Kyle Rittenhouse. What is he looking at? Uh, it could range anywhere from uh, reckless injury to reckless homicide to second-degree homicide. I don't know yet. It's all going to depend on... Murder? That's what homicide is. Yes. Correct. Correct. Support for Kyle Rittenhouse. Free Kyle. Free Kyle. Free Kyle. Free Kyle. Yeah. Free Kyle. Free Kyle. Free Kyle. Plus, the criminal case moves forward. This is not a political trial. It's not going to be a political trial. When chaos in Kenosha, the Kyle Rittenhouse case continues. of the shootings in Kenosha, Wisconsin, 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse became a political lightning rod. As this story explodes around the nation, I mean, people are watching those videos, 
and, and hearing about what happened, and they are seeing two completely different things. I mean, people are dug in on, on both sides. Uh, there were those who saw him as an armed vigilante who entered a situation knowing that he was going there to do something uh, sinister. There are others who saw him as a hero, someone who went in there to protect property and ended up having to protect himself by using self-defense. So many people were talking about this case and arguing about it. Even then-President Donald Trump weighed in on the case. You guys condemn the actions of vigilantes like Kyle Rittenhouse? And well, we're, we're looking at all of it. Uh, that was an interesting situation. You saw the same tape as I saw, and uh, he was trying to get away from them, I guess, it looks like, and he fell, and then they very violently attacked him, and it was something that we're looking at right now, and it's under investigation, but uh, I, I guess he was in very big trouble. He would have been, I, he probably would have been killed. From the streets to the airwaves, Kyle Rittenhouse found himself at the center of a national debate that had been brewing for months about social justice, gun rights, and police reform. How shocked are we that 17-year-olds with rifles decided they had to maintain order when no one else would? Stop saying, well, it's no wonder that a young person would take a gun and want to defend or whatever. That is that is ridiculous. Kyle Rittenhouse was charged with multiple offenses, including two counts of murder. Within a week, a tsunami of support began building for Rittenhouse, which he addressed from jail in a phone call posted by his attorney, John Pierce. I just want to thank every single one of you from the bottom of my heart for the underlining support. Um, it's just amazing. I want to thank all of you for the mail I've been receiving. It's been really helpful. I just want to let you all know that I'm going to be out of here soon and stay strong, and I hope, I hope to see you guys soon. Kyle's attorney's first move was to fight his extradition from Illinois back to Wisconsin. Your Honor, it's no secret there, that, that, that this is a very unique, extraordinary situation. Um, there, there's a massive amount of video evidence that shows that there's you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is not a legitimate criminal prosecution, it is a political prosecution. Extradition was really never in question. Uh, he went home to Illinois. He was going to be extradited back to Wisconsin. But interestingly, and we were all shocked by this, his attorneys decided to bring up some novel old English law that they were going to use to stop the extradition from happening. It was just kind of puzzling. Why? Was the point of it just to draw more attention to his defense? Maybe. Maybe it was a legal strategy all along just to know we want to get our position out there because his defense team is adamant that he acted in self-defense that night. As expected, the Illinois court ruled against Rittenhouse sending him back to Wisconsin two weeks later. Kyle was released on $2 million cash bail raised by supporters, including former child actor Ricky Schroeder. Kyle was reunited with his mother, Wendy, who spoke to Blaze.com. When they said a $2 million bail, I was like, oh my God, how am I gonna get that, you know? I am grateful for the American people that donated to, to Kyle to get him home. And we have a new website, um, Free Kyle USA, um, it, to raise more money. There's gonna be some great merchandise There's, on it uh, very quickly, designed by Kyle himself, yeah. by the way. We have this Free Kyle website that's selling merchandise, merch. I mean, we think of merch in America, we think of concerts and sporting events and things like that. Here, this is a fundraising effort for him with shirts designed by him that are being sold by people who believe so much that he's a hero. This is a very aggressive defense. And, and, and the way they're seeing the defense of Kyle Rittenhouse is they're not just fighting prosecutors, they're fighting the media in the way they have portrayed Kyle Rittenhouse and what has happened to him from their perspective. So they want to even the playing field. And they put together this highly produced video to lay their case out. I mean, the defense rarely shows their cards this quickly, but they showed them all because it's not just about the courtroom. It's about the court of public opinion. So now I've been in this business and television business for about 30 years or so. This was an incredibly well-produced, slick-produced video, certainly commissioned by someone who knew what they were doing. In pretrial hearings, the attorneys representing Kyle Rittenhouse have made it clear they plan to argue self-defense. Turning to the case of State against Kyle Rittenhouse, 
Um, this is here for pretrial today. It is without debate, Judge. All three of these people were chasing Kyle Rittenhouse. All of them. That is that is not debatable. At the time of that first shooting of Joseph Rosenbaum, what the defense is going to want to do is they don't want to put the jury in the shoes of Kyle Rittenhouse. And think about it. Kyle Rittenhouse, a 17-year-old guy, he does have this AR-15 for protection, but he's being chased by Joseph Rosenbaum, and then here's a shot. Now, if you put yourself in his shoes, and that's what the defense is going to want this jury to do, think about that shot. Under those circumstances, they're going to argue that that shot changes everything. That gunshot was fired seconds before Kyle Rittenhouse shot Joseph Rosenbaum. According to investigators, the man who fired the first shot is 35-year-old Joshua Zeminski. Joshua Zeminski is the person we saw in that earlier video at the gas station, and he's there with Rosenbaum, who's going back and forth with the, the guys with the long guns. And you saw, it was very clear, that Zeminski had his own gun. That exact argument was made by the defense at a preliminary hearing. This individual in the far right with his arm raised up, do you know who that is? The one that your mouth just pointed to? Yes. Yeah, that uh, that's Mr. Zeminski. My client in exhibit two is running from Mr. Rosenbaum when a shot is fired by Mr. Zeminski, correct? Correct. Joshua Zeminski. Firing that gun is huge in this case. And it's huge for the defense because for the defense, they've got to explain to this jury what is going through the mind of Kyle Rittenhouse. Why is he firing his weapon? What is he perceiving at that moment? Because in this case, self-defense means that the defendant had to be under the apprehension or belief that serious bodily harm or death was imminent. He could have been killed. Mr. Rittenhouse is in the process of fleeing. Even if he provoked this situation, he's trying to flee, which means if you're trying to flee, even if you're the first aggressor, you can then use self-defense. Coming up, Kyle Rittenhouse caught on camera in a bar, drinking beer with members of the Proud Boys. I assume then at this point you're going to be entering pleas? Yes, prepared to enter not guilty pleas to all the charges contained therein. In early January 2021, Kyle Rittenhouse was formally arraigned and charged with the murders of Joseph Rosenbaum and Anthony Huber, as well as the attempted murder of Gage Grosskreutz. Just hours after that court appearance, Kyle Rittenhouse, who was out on bail, ended up at a place called Pudgy's Pub. So after his arraignment, Kyle Rittenhouse and his mom go to Pudgy's Pub. And yeah, he's not 21, but if you're there with your mom, you're allowed to drink, so he's drinking. We're seeing kind of stretch. <laughs> Hi, you guys, are, you guys are looking at a problem. And there is a post online with a picture of Kyle Rittenhouse at Pudgy's on the 5th. So in this bar, he's having a few drinks, and he's wearing a T-shirt that says, free as f People start wanting to come talk to him. He starts taking pictures with folks who turn out to be white supremacists. So this just looked so bad. Technically, he wasn't breaking any laws, but it looked awful. And optics matter. Prosecutors wound up learning about this incident, and then they motioned the court to modify his bail. This was not a random uh, crossing of paths here in a random bar at a random time where they just happen upon one another. Uh, this was something that was uh, coordinated. They go back into court, they want to get those pictures admitted, and they also want to raise his bail. This is something where uh, Mr. Rittenhouse uh, intended to be there, these other individuals intended to be there, uh, and the Proud Boys organization is relevant to this case because we have to put the incident uh, of August 25th in context. We have downloaded Mr. Rittenhouse's cellular phone. 
we have an expert review that phone. That expert has done an analysis to try to determine if there is anything on that phone related to Proud Boys, militia, white nationalists, Boogaloo Boys, KKK, three percenters. And the finding was the extraction does not establish that the user belonged to or even had any interest in any malicious style organizations. It is one, an unfortunate fact that this case has become um, a surrogate for a, a lot of emotional reaction that has nothing to do or little to do or nothing to do with the issues in the case. And for me to let that in as evidence of a motive that existed four months earlier, can't see it, absolutely not. In addition to the Pudgy's photos, there were two videos that the prosecution wants to introduce at this trial. Now, one of them, Kyle Rittenhouse is sitting in a car with a friend, and apparently there's a situation at a CBS uh, involving some shoplifters or alleged shoplifters. It looks like one of them has a weapon. She hung up. In another video, you can see Kyle getting involved in a skirmish involving his sister and another girl. And you can see Kyle, he's wearing the red, white, and blue shorts. Ooh, move, Kyle, move. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, he, oh, no, 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 he's punching the bitch. Bro. On the game. <laughs> The bottom line with the ruling by Judge Schroeder is that the jury's not going to hear about what Kyle Rittenhouse was saying on that video, taking a look at those shoplifters wanting to get his gun, not going to hear about him jumping into a fight uh, against a girl that his sister was having. That doesn't come in because according to the judge, it doesn't help this jury one bit and would prejudice Kyle Rittenhouse. Both sides agree that Kyle Rittenhouse shot and killed Joseph Rosenbaum and Anthony Huber and seriously injured Gage Grosskreutz. It will likely be up to Kyle Rittenhouse himself to convince the jury that it was in self-defense. The defense is most certainly going to put forth a case and Kyle Rittenhouse is going to be the star of that defense case. His testimony is going to mean everything. You're going to see the defense in many instances throughout this trial go back to the issue that he was a 17-year-old boy at the time of this, and you cannot judge his actions after the fact. For this jury, they have to sit, listen to him. Does his story make sense? Do they believe him? Does that story match what they see in the video? There's no question at all that this case is going to be just as much of a powder keg as the George Floyd case. Nobody should have died that night. Everybody was there exercising their right to protest. We're Americans. We, we're better than that. It angers me that people have been doing this to him, label him as a white supremacist, a terrorist, Hitler. He's none of that. Our son didn't get to spend Thanksgiving with us, but Rittenhouse did. He got to spend all kinds of time at the bar, live it up, making videos with his white supremacist friends, singing videos with a shirt that says free, free as You're not gonna be free as Justice is gonna be served to you. This is gonna be tough. I have never in, in the history of, of covering cases here ever thought that the most likely verdict here is a hung jury. Because I've seen the way America has reacted to this, and I'm wondering if the 12 jurors in Kenosha will react the same way.